Hi there, traders, and happy Labor Day. And being a Labor Day weekend, I'm offering a uh, services for uh, more than 90%. So all you got to do is go to the link below or type in www.estetraders or estetrader.com forward slash Labor Day special or check the link below. I want you to check out our what we have to offer in terms and check out for this whole month for only ten dollars, guys. Check it out, and, we, and I almost can guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. And on top of that, I'll be offering the uh, course, the beginner course, on top of that, basically for free. And you're going to receive the, the trade recommendations or the trade alerts on top of the day-to-day uh, -day education that you're going to receive. So, if you have any questions? please feel free to email me directly at estetraders at gmail.com, estetraders at gmail.com, or contact us at estetrader.com. So before we begin in terms of our weekly market update to discuss what's in store for the week, please note that these videos are for educational purposes only and not to be taken in form of advice. Trading in general is risky and do not trade if you cannot afford to lose. And if you need to know more, please visit our website at www.estetrader.com. Past performance is, is not indicative of future results. And we're not guaranteeing that just because we have in terms of these recommendations of our videos, then it constitute advice. All right, let's go through in terms of uh, the, the, the macro fundamentals first. In terms of news, what are the major news that's coming basically um, today and the end of the week. Mind you though, that in the US it was a bank holiday due to Labor Day long weekend. However, tonight we'll have the RBA rate statement in Australia. Then tomorrow uh, we have medium impact news based on uh, the pound. The MPC member Sanders is going to speak. Then back to the Euro, ZEW economic sentiment and German ZEW economic sentiment. Wednesday, there's quite a few there based on Canada. You have a Bank of Canada rate statement. Then it follows by the PMI overnight rate. And in the US, you have the jolts, the job openings with the medium impact. Then back to the pound, the monetary policy report earnings. And then 10 o'clock, mind you, these are all Pacific Standard Times which is at 10, 11, 12, 1 in the afternoon, 10-year bond auction. FOMC member Williams going to speak. And then Thursday at 4.45 Pacific Standard Time, you have the Euro monetary policy rate statement, uh, main refinancing rate at an ECB press conference after uh, 45 minutes and unemployment claims in the US, which is 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And back to Canada. News, Canadian news, Governor McClam is going to speak based on uh, the Bank of Canada. Then you have a 30-year bond auction at 10.01 in the U.S. Then Friday, you have uh, Back to Canada Employment Change and Employment Rate, and then PPI, Purchasing Price Index, and Core PPI uh, that, that follows suit after that. So those are the major news that you have to be aware and let's go through now looking at the S&P 500 based on the weekly and what happened last week. So uh, last week, there was quite a few. Remember, it was non-farm payroll, but notice in terms of the volume still, even though Friday's volume was higher, but the overall in terms of the volume was the currently based on the weekly, you, you can see it's depleting. So there's divergence between volume and price. I am not still based on that for the, if you've been listening to our reports on a week-by-week -week basis, uh, I am not a uh, buyer of the markets, despite there are certain key numbers here, like 45, 47, in terms of uh, your fee, um, not just the retracement, uh, but in terms of the fee and continuation, uh, notice that 78.6 basically hit it, plus or minus uh, two two points from there. So where to from here? Odds and probability that, like I said, it could potentially keep going. However, it's also way overbought, in my own opinion. And despite from a stability perspective, I'm not a buyer with it. So likewise for the volatility index, so there was some form of divergence between the S and P and the VIX. Uh, so notice it created now basically a hammer from uh, last week. 
odds and probability and likewise for the low but mind you it actually touched it and then uh, basically rebounded to the upside i am bullish with the vix so that means that the s p i'm bearish with the s p in actual fact all right so that's within the weekly chart dollar index same thing um it touched certain key levels it is still based on an uptrend. There is no clear indication here that it's going to drop. Um, even if, say, it will go through around this area, still there is no higher loads. It's also way over uh, sold, in my opinion, from a correctional standpoint, based on the daily time frame since the 20th of August has been dropping. So I have no doubt that this is also going to rebound to the upside. So for this week, I am bullish with the dollar index. Oil. I am bearish actually with oil, with US oil, and likewise for uh, crude oil. So mind you too, though, this is based on what I see. I, I know that I also can be wrong. And hence, make sure to do your due diligence, diligence and not just basically believe in what I believe in, go through in terms of the, the fundamentals component. But based on the, from a technical perspective, from an objective point of view, this is basically from a forecasting point of view, just the probability. So the probability in terms of it dropping is, for me, is highly more probable than it going up. Um, gold, same. So after a breakout, yes, medium to longer term, there's a possibility it could continue to go further to the upside. However, after one, two, three, four um, weeks, a month of it going up, there has to be also some form of correction before it can continue. So short term to medium term, I'm bearish with gold. All right. And then copper. Uh, I'm actually bullish with copper unless this doji from a form point of stability will take precedence based on the trend because also you have that lower low over here. However, it's also basically still an uptrend and hence as a trend follower, I'm, I'm bullish medium to longer term with uh, copper. Uh, but if not, then from stability point of view, this is going to fail short term. So from this perspective, I am bearish short term, we're bullish long term. All right, so that is uh, with copper. The yield through the year yield simply after the higher low um, got created. There is a convergence that's currently happening between the two, so a breakout will occur. I am bullish medium to longer term with the yield, and then short term, I'm also bullish with it. All right, so that's based from a macro global uh, economic component in terms of uh, analysis. We'll go through now in terms of the majors against the US dollar. Looking at the weekly time frame for Aussie, very nice clear breakout through there. Um, longer term, it is still basically bullish since March of 2020. Um, however, from a two-week bull, so bullish, very bullish also last week, there could be a potential continuation of uh, the Aussie medium to longer term, so I'm bullish with it. Short term, on the other hand, I am bearish as a form of a correction with the Aussie against the US dollar. So just be aware. Uh, overall, still basically downtrend in terms of the daily time frame. However, create also a new higher high through there. Uh, from a correctional standpoint, we could head back to around 73, 13, so about approximately 120 pips to the downside. All right, looking at the euro against the US dollar. So the euro against the US dollar was also very bullish from last week. Could there be more room and more for this to go to the upside? Yes. However, from a short-term perspective, have a gravestone doji over there. The high of this one, 19090, 19087. So it created a new higher high. From a new higher high, higher low will be formed. Uh, a better buying position for me when the proper higher low will form. However, from a short-term perspective, since the price at supply, I'm more bearish with uh, the euro against the dollar since I'm also bullish with the dollar index. All right, so that's uh, within the euro pound against the US dollar. Same, it broke out within this trend from a lower low, create a new higher low. I have no doubt it would create a new higher high, approximately about 140 all the way to back to 141, 142, somewhere sometime in terms of medium to longer term. Um, however, from a daily perspective, I am also bearish from a correctional standpoint, uh, since also within this from higher low, new higher high, another higher low, minor higher low before 
a creation of a major higher low if we can continue to go to the upside. Kiwi against the US dollar based on the weekly, also very bullish, a lot of volume. There's more continuation to the upside, perhaps around 7286, somewhere there, 73. Um, however, from a medium to longer term, I'm bullish, shorter term, stability point of view, area of equilibrium from that high to that low, also at supply, way overbought, in my opinion, from a correctional standpoint, that's gonna to bound to happen. So I'm sh uh, short term, I'm bearish at the Kiwi against the US dollar, bullish medium to longer term. Dollar CAD, so dollar CAD, in terms of its uh, um, weekly chart here, so there is one, two bearish movements from this very bullish move. So it took two to one for, for the price to come back. Also, price is at demand. I am short-term bullish with it because it also needs to create either a new lower high somewhere sometime. Daily time frame. this is well where it's at at this point. Uh, it created all the 125.59 earlier sometime today, created a new higher low but you still a lower high from there, 59 to 59 flat. So it'd be very interesting on what you could do um, this week. Prices at demand, I am bullish with it. It's a low risk, high probability trade. Likewise for the dollar Swiss, I am bullish short term with the dollar Swiss. Mid, uh, weekly, same uh, odds and probability from a correctional standpoint, this will go, continue to go to the upside rather than to the downside. All right, so this is the majors against the US dollar. One more, by the way, the dollar against the Japanese yen. Stability. Um, but because, because of these forces to the downside, there could be more possibility that this can fail to the downside, needing to longer term. If not, from a breakout, you go through there, but after one, two, three, four consolidation, it's not moving, then the odds that the sellers will be pushing the price down is more than likely to happen. So, once their price heads back somewhere here to get a better price uh, from a um, supply area, then even better. Because right now it is still from a demand perspective. All right. So that's my report for today, for the week. And um, please check it out in terms of Lever Day special. Check us out. You know, it doesn't cost much if it's less than uh, price of coffee on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, for ten dollars for the whole month, and then I'm offering basically a fifty percent discount for that, uh, as long as you are a paying member. All right, so that's in terms of our Labor Day special. So take advantage of it, and I look forward to seeing you in class. Take care until next time. Happy trading. Bye now.